It is indicated in this uh, memoranda that we have discussed uh, this, this morning. Otherwise, uh, we would like your support, uh, the support of everyone, every Kenyan, all the farmers, to work hard on increasing our productivity, to be able to ensure that we are doing well in that sector. We want to minimize importation of food economy of this country, is to invest in agriculture. And these are the only two arms of government that will assure increased productivity and improved economy uh, for the nation. I think that's the end of my comments. Even you to have to have in cancer cases and all that, this moment is not safe for her. How do you go about, how do you plan to go about um, um, informing the public and public participation? From the media, who is it that can be able to tell us where or which channel, where we do not want to make any error at all. And that's why we want to, uh, to confine ourselves to the statement as written because this is the position that the Ministry of Agriculture and the leadership of the Council of Governors have agreed. And for that matter, it's very important to have the right information go out there. And uh, just uh, I'll read the statement uh, on behalf of the COG and, and the ministry. And I will ask my uh, friends, the excellence in governors here, either to make very brief uh, comments or confirm that this is the position that we've agreed. So uh, this is the communication of the Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Agriculture and Lifestyle Development, and the Council of Governors Agriculture Committee on this 20th day of November. And uh, the Cabinet Secretary and His Excellency Mutai Kaiga, Vice Chairperson of Agriculture and Livestock Committee of the Council of Governors, uh, with the Governors for Taraka Nithi, uh, Baringo, Mr. Cheboy, uh, Mudomi Njuki, Vandilisha from Nyandarua. Uh, I held a, cons uh, a consultative meeting to address areas of cooperation with the Council of Governors to transform the agriculture sector and move the country towards food and nutrition security. The meeting that was held at this uh, ministry's bootroom, Klim House, uh, today. Uh, in this meeting, we recognize that there is need for continuous engagements and consultations between the ministry and the county governments to drive this agenda. And it was further recognized that there is need for the two levels of government to strengthen extension and farm advisories services to support the farmers improve production. We therefore resolve that a technical team comprising seven members is hereby formed to be co-chaired by the PS Ari Kimtai and the CEO Council of Governors Miri Mwiti to spearhead the process of reviewing all the policy and legal issues in the agriculture sector and report back within four weeks. The technical team shall meet on a bi weekly basis. That the Ministry and the Council of Governors shall strengthen the joint agricultural sector consultation mechanism and ensure continuous engagement between the ministry and the county governments on issues 
concerning the agricultural sector, a review of the current framework to ensure it is responsive to our current needs. That the ministry and the government to prioritize and create a holistic and countrywide program. That the ministry, of, the ministry and the Council of Governors will last with the National Assembly to pass the government, the county government's additional funds bill 2022 to support the agricultural development in the counties. And that the ministry will ensure inclusion of the Council of Governors in the development of programs and projects in the, in the, in the agricultural sector. That this ministry and the Council of Governors to convene a joint agricultural sector forum bringing together all the stakeholders in the agricultural sector and that the ministry do commit to review the national value chain development projects to ensure that the inclusion of the seven counties that were left out to, ensure, were left out to ensure the ring the ring fencing of the gains mint under the nagri and the kenya uh, climate smart and culture program so this is uh, what we've agreed and there was need for us to meet as the people or as the ministry that is supposed to work very closely in driving policy and agenda to ensure food security in this country and recognizing the fact that uh, agriculture is uh, involved. There is no way we can achieve food security without the involvement of the county governments. There, is, there was need for us to sit and discuss and try to plan and organize ourselves or now we face this mon monster ahead of us because it is a shame that 60 years after independence, this country at times has to rely on relief food. So we will, I want to commit that we are going to work very closely with our county governments to ensure uh, that, the, that the toxic environment that exists between the ministry and the council of governors is no more because there is need for us to work uh, uh, together. There is need because we are serving the same people and we understand that we are not in competition. We understand we are working for the same Kenyan people that decided in their wisdom to vote uh, the national government together with the 47 different uh, county governments. And for that matter, the 48 governments are just one country. And there is every reason to why we must work because we are conjoined, we are Siamese twins. We have no option but to deliver food to the people of the Republic of Kenya. This is the first meeting of this kind. And this is just meant to show you that we are willing and ready to work together. We expect things, better things to happen in the future. And since this is the beginning, we've now, just like we've told you, set up a committee that will now come up with um, a clear framework, uh, a strategy on how we want to, to achieve uh, food and nutritional security in the country. And I am so happy this afternoon that we have been able to uh, create or be able to bring our minds together and we have established a common ground on what we want to achieve as uh, the national government and the county government, and I am sure, and I can only ask for patience among the Kenyan people, that let them give us a short time. In, things will be different. In another one year, I think when you look at the statistics of our, our, our food balance sheet, things will be different. Because I'm in, in one year, we shall have started producing, and now, we are just uh, uh, getting, uh, eating the ground running because this is where we want to take, we want to take the country to full sufficiency. We have agreed on how we will be able to collaborate 
in terms of ensuring our sub food, our subsidies get to the right people, the involvement, and everybody else. And I, I believe uh, for those that are doubting Thomas's, uh, then we will prove them wrong. As Anten Sana, much more to go. Get the feel of the chair of the minister. Yes, <coughs> yes. I am the chair emeritus for the Committee of Agriculture of Council of Governors, and I want to assure you, CS, yes, we sat here about five years ago and we had a very good conversation. And when we went out there, it was different. This, it is in this room where we, we describe the, the, <coughs> the famous, um, the famous uh, locust that had invaded, invaded this country that attracted a lot of attention. But since then, and I want to make it clear to the fourth estate, as a council of governors, we are very happy to be on a table where we are speaking the same language because we have been talking at each other instead of talking to each other. And this is what has made the, the production and farming in Kenya very difficult because basically, CS, governments don't do any farming, they don't do any production. Our work is facilitative. This Kilimo house has no farm. Not here, not out there. Our farmers are the ones who do the production. But if we do not collaborate as counties and the national government or the ministry to ensure that where our farmers are producing, we speak in the same language that is of facilitating them, that is where we end up being, where we are today, where we have a big deficit in terms of feeding, of food to feed our, our nation. And now we are turning to importing where uh, <clears throat> there's a communication which is informal. That uh, we are going to, imp I mean, the maize is going to import a different type of maize than what our Kenyan people think about. Which, of course, I want to dispel that as uh, something that has not been communicated. See, as it is important to note that as a Council of Governors, our biggest bill on uh, legal fee is uh, the disputes, the legal disputes between the Council of Governors and the Ministry of Agriculture, Kilima House. And that is something we hope that can be sorted out and that those who have been benefiting from that legal uh, stalemate can now look for somewhere else benefit from because that is money that can be used to drive other other agenda in in our in our council of governors and also in the ministry, because both sides definitely have legal tips that are benefiting from this uh, statement. We pray that what has not been agreed upon on the registration of various um, departments within the ministry can be agreed upon, and we pray that technical committees that have been put in place today can come up with a solution to that, so that we can completely. Uh, stop having two different teams which are not working in the same direction in tandem uh, towards production in this country. And lastly, uh, CS, uh, Kenyans, these people here, uh, the most interesting news that they, they are looking out to is whether we are food sufficient and how, how, <coughs> how badly off are we looking at the rains that are there we are not sure that they're going to fail again. There is a bumper harvest that is expected in, um, in, the, in the rifts and in the western parts of the country. How much do we have in terms of projection for the food basket? What will be the deficit in the next few years? And despite the noises that are there about uh, what you're going to import, uh, would, you like, would you assure the Kenyans that uh, as a ministry we will be able to have enough food on the table because if you listen to the voice of everybody about what you're importing, the price of Wunga that is now where it is and every Kenyan is worried about it and they're waiting for it to come down after election will double if the ministry does not take the right decision at the moment. Sometimes you are forced to ignore all the noises that are around you and make the right decision and the nation will thank you later. I am saying that because it's a big debate about uh, the maize importation and I, I am here on my behalf, I don't want to say on behalf of the council to say that uh, we are better off trying to balance the prices of production by our farmers 
and starvation by our people. Because we can have very good prices for the farmers who are produce maize. And at the same time, we end up having not enough of it and a lot of Kenyan stuff, which is going to be more expensive. Because our price of wunga come the time when we have no, no, no stocks in this country. The maize millers will triple and double that uh, price of wunga and you'll, you'll wish you're not in this ministry, Wanda Minister. So it's, it, I would, we urge you and we back, up, we back you up to make the right decision to ensure that the price of wunga will come down and at the same time, the farmers are protected on the, on the production. It's a delicate balance. We don't envy you, but we assure you are equal to the task because you took the job. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. So, so, The subsidy or the subsidized inputs program is really the most important thing that the government is doing. By subsidizing fertilizer, seeds, and, uh, and, and, and those things that are required for production of food, then we are going to reduce the cost of production and therefore uh, more food will be produced, uh, meaning that in the not too distant future there will be no need for importation of uh, any food. The other thing that the government uh, has committed itself to, and none other than the president has said, that we, the government intends to build uh, many irrigation uh, programs, many dams, that will facilitate the use of non-rain-fed agriculture. That means we shall be able to produce food on a continuous basis. With those two strategies, then the necessity to import food is going to be minimized. And I think that that is what the, the CS and the Ministry of Agriculture and the Council of Governors will prioritize in order to make Kenya food sufficient. Thank you much. No, you can never be forced to sell your produce. So you will sell when you think it's necessary and when there is need. But what I want to, to ask farmers is to ensure that even those that have any surplus, yeah, and know the one that I'm using delivery is surplus, don't sell your food and then you are left without anything to eat the next day. Make sure that you have enough stocks for yourself and then if you want to raise some money, uh, to pay school fees, then you can sell. For 90 kg, is around five, between 5,400 to around 5,800, which is um, basically out of reach of many Kenyans. And that is why I am working over and drive to ensure that we bring down that cost of uh, a 90 kilogram of maize from that price to some price that is affordable. I want to see whether or how we can be able to bring it below. That's when you find me sitting here with the governors. That, I, that is how, it's a demonstration of how serious we are. We've been, been doing a lot, uh, very little talking, but uh, you'll find uh, very uh, soon the results that will come out from the consultative meetings that we are having, and whatever it takes, to ensure that the cost of food, the cost of rice, the cost of wunga, the cost of beans, the cost of uh, sukari is brought down. I will go out of my way to ensure that happens. And Modomi has put it very clearly. We'll have to balance uh, uh, between people making abnormal profits, making so much money at the expense of our people dying. So it's a delicate balance which uh, we need to do but uh, you also need to appreciate that uh, the government has already come in uh, trying to subsidize the cost of our inputs. And uh, it is not really about how much a bag is going for. To me, let us focus on how much we are spending to produce a bag of maize. Because if you do a bag of maize that costs you 10000 to produce and sell the bag of maize at 11000 you're only making 1000 if I'm bringing the cost of production of a bag of maize to 2,000 and then you sell it at 500, you are doing better than the person that uh, assumed his bag at 11,000. So these are the arithmetics we are trying to work on, and that's why you hear has been speaking so loudly about how to contain the cost of production, how we ensure 
that at least each one of us, and I'm also telling you, so that uh, you also utilize that small piece of land you have there, or or the, the, the balcony of your house, wherever you live, because you can also be able to support us in uh, uh, producing food by use of various technologies that uh, we are developing. We, are, we want you to assist us uh, get information to the people that through Calro, uh, through this matter of uh, what Korea sent. And I don't take what I find on social media as anything that is worth responding to. Because I am the custodian of the statistics on uh, how much food we require in this country, how much food we consume every, every day. So I don't want to get into that space. And uh, uh, right now, I have, you've, my technical people have worked on all the, all, all the deficits in terms of maize, in terms of uh, uh, beans, in terms of rice, whatever is required of the country to ensure that immediately after this harvest, we do not lack food from those months of February, March, to one sagas before we experience uh, the long rains. Uh, so I will be uh, making a, a more comprehensive statement later to address or to inform parliament and the country on the food situation generally in the country. And uh, in the intervening period, whatever is supposed to be done by me, I will do it because we have a responsibility as government to ensure that there is food on the table for everyone. So uh, I think you have to own your horses because I like speaking from a point of knowledge and uh, information that I give out there must be banked by data or statistics. Figures are very important and critical as far as I'm concerned because I also like being consistent. I don't want to tell you this now and tomorrow I teach uh, uh, the script. No, I want to remain firm because I want to give a, a position that that I am ready to defend at uh, whatever forum. Uh, <clears throat> I have seen whatever uh, interventions that will commend themselves unto me when I have finished my meetings with the technical people and have taken the right advice from them. I will not test it. If there is no need, it will not happen. If there is a need, I will not blink an eye. To a, I will do it. So uh, it is quite premature at the moment to state clearly what position. And I have, I'm saying it because that is what we must finalize by the end of today because I must also be updating Parliament either on Wednesday or yeah, tomorrow. Wednesday is the day after tomorrow. So I want to get my figures right and I don't want you to misquote me. So relax, you will have fun. Right? I will make sure that you have no problem. So, but when I give you food, you must be willingly and gladly accept because you are angry. And then the other we probably research on is how, it, how probably, just like you've put it, that uh, there is excess food in some parts of the country when Nyandarwa doesn't have food or something like that, if I got you right. Because uh, that one I am not sure. Uh, that uh, that has been the kind of a cycle, uh, but I think we uh, basically, you know, this country has different climatic conditions, and the effects of climate change uh, have really affected the flow and the manner in uh, our rain patterns are. So it is not uh, really hard to find or to find some areas will have food when others do not. What I am, we need to do, and that's why I'm asking people or inviting people to leverage on technology, is that if uh, you, we are in a, we are, you come from areas and where for three or four seasons you have rain without uh, rain, probably we need to adopt these other new varieties that can resist those uh, harsh climatic conditions. We are getting to levels where and by we also want to tap on this technology to ensure that uh, we are able to predict our weather for quite some bit of period of time. And this advisory or this information will be important in ensuring our farmers 
have adequate information so that they, they are able to get prepared. We've, had, we've been discussing with the governors here that they need for extension services. That information will not get to the public without these extension officers. And I must admit that uh, this space of agricultural extension officers and uh, I, I, has been uh, left unattended for quite some time. And uh, we won't see how we can be able to solve that problem and because we can easily attribute it to the, 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 the slow pace and, or the lack of production from our farmers because enough information in terms of technology, in terms of the scene, in terms of uh, what should be done, where, at what time, in terms of when we require to have fertilizer uh, or whatever inputs has been lacking. So we want to create a seamless way of trying to do things because it is through these efforts together that we can be able to realize this dream of making sure that we have enough food for this country. As Antenne Sana, on the position of GMO, so it's not something we can discuss. So if there will be need to bring GMO uh, mess, we won't do it, because the cabinet has decided that we must lift the ban. But remember, even we have, if, if we were to get there, there are certain protocols that guide uh, use our, impl uh, our importation of GMO. There are those Carthagena protocols, those that I want to research and get to know about them. We have the, the National uh, Biosafety Authority, which is now domiciled in this ministry. And because we are cognizant of the fact that the lives and, and uh, the health of our people is so important to us, we cannot afford to be careless as a government. We will make sure that the, ne the necessary precautionary uh, measures uh, uh, are taken, uh, right, are taken into place, and we will do the right thing. And we also require to uh, for, to allow the experts uh, speak about uh, some of the things that appear uh, uh, that, uh, that, 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 serious, uh, that are seriously academic, and uh, we would want people that uh, and linked any cancer case has been linked to consumption of a GMO. Let us be honest with one another and let us not fall into this, uh, uh, this story of politicians. Master of double speak. I have just come from Korea. I was eating GMO. I've traveled on a number of times, even when I was a member of Parliament, America, UK. We've been eating GMO. So now that uh, uh, maybe probably some people are not doing it, you want to say when there is congent evidence to link uh, probably a GMO to cancer of any sort. And I'm telling you, there are countries that are more advanced in science than in Kenya, and these people take it. So I think uh, we have, we have, um, uh, we have um, a government that is keen to ensure that there is food and the health of our Kenyans, or our people in this country is so critical, is so dear to us that you cannot afford to be careless. As Antenna is